Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special bonus episode of Esoteric Atlanta. Normally on this channel, if you're new to this channel, we normally do stories, French stories, and weird topics that you don't see on other channels. But today, we have our second live interview with one of my friends, Cindy, who I've had the pleasure of knowing for like six, seven years now. Um, and Cindy, in my opinion, is a spiritual guru. I don't know if she would call herself that, but I think she is. Um, uh, Cindy, the, the spiritual life definitely picked her because um, of her, her lineage. Um, and Cindy is a yoga teacher, but she's so much more than a yoga teacher. For those who know a little bit about my background from this channel, I am trained in one particular, particular lineage of yoga or spiritual theory, whereas Cindy is kind of the master of all traits, and she can combine a lot of different schools and different thoughts into one comprehensive outlook on the world around us and this matrix that our spiritual beings find ourselves in. And as we enter into this new timeline with the age of Aquarius, I know a lot of people are starting to realize that we are so much more than we thought we were in the age of Pisces. And so welcome Cindy to Esoteric Atlanta. Thank you for having me. I can't believe it's been six years already. When you I know, that. right? Like, wow, that's crazy. Time is <laughs> <That's> illusion. <laughs> um, but it keeps marching on. So Cindy is Peruvian American, and she has her, obviously, <laughs> her roots in Peru. And also, aren't you a little Irish, too? Don't you have a little bit of Irish in you as well? Oh, my God. Yeah, can't, can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> It's like maybe 2% or 3% or something like that. It's not a whole lot. Well, Ireland, <laughs> but there is some in there. When I, when I got my DNA test back, I was like, what? Irish? Okay. Well, Ireland <laughs> is such a very magical place as well. And so I was like, well, that yeah. makes sense. She's Peruvian and Irish. There you go. It's like the perfect, perfect combination. So why don't you tell people a little bit about your background? And, and I know you come from a really cool lineage. And so um, of Peruvian women, especially. So give some, give our audience a little bit about you. Well, I was born in Peru. Hey, there's my cat in the background. <laughs> knew something good was going on over here. He's like, hmm, I'm checking this out. I'm anyway, so I, <laughs> I know. I was born in Peru, but I came here to America when I was about three, three and a half to four years old. So I was pretty much raised in America. Um, but I go back to visit Peru pretty frequently. I still have a lot of family there. And uh, um, I was uh, born in Lima in the city of Peru. But um, I have a lot of that Andean, Andean American tradition within, within my heritage, within my blood. And also, um, you know, being from, from Peru, uh, since they were conquered by the Spaniards and all that stuff, there's a lot of Portugal and Spain and, and kind of that, uh, that part that comes in as well, which I also feel like, I, you know, I feel that, that Portugal, Spain, France, Southern Europe influence um, you know, we were talking before about uh, Mary Magdalene, and yes, yes. that's kind of where, you know, she lived and where she came from, and I, <clears throat> I feel a certain connection to her just from that part uh, of my own background. Um, so basically, I feel like I'm just like this big melting pot of, of places and, um, and lineages and the heritages, but you know, most of all, uh, within my bloodline is the, the Andean tradition. And I started exploring those shamanic roots uh, more, like more uh, actively, uh, probably around my late 20s. Because see, I grew up Catholic, like any good Peruvian, <laughs> Latina American. <clears throat> uh, so Catholic is what I grew up and, you know, all the way up through high school. And it was when I entered college when I started to explore other different things. And that's also where, you know, I started to first feel that connection with like the, the Mother Mary and, and of course, Mary Magdalene there as well, even though, of course, you know, she's talked about in a different kind of way within the, the Catholic tradition. So I have this utter fascination still to this day with big old churches and the old graveyards. <laughs> so yep. there's, there's some of that that's weaved in as well. 
And then um, my, I started yoga also uh, going on that path probably around my late twenties. And um, I started more with, and, and I think it was important to get anchored in, you know, the traditional yoga is very much anchored in like light, golden light and the sentient and higher consciousness and all these things. And I think that that was an important base and an important anchor for me to have and for me to continue to have, especially as you start to explore all the other different like realms, the more colorful realms of, of like shamanism or the path of the goddess or the red path or, or any of the, the more colorful paths <clears throat> because they can be very distracting to the ego, <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. So to be able to have something like a, a, like a base in yoga to come back to and remember, okay, you know, I need to, why I'm doing this and, and why I'm here so that when you go off into uh, exploring all the other different realms, especially when you're talking about us uh, going into the age of Aquarius and how people are now interested. I mean, they want to explore all these other different, and, and the thing is, I think it's more available to us now than it used to be. Absolutely. It's a lot more available. Like when I started off, I had to look through the yellow pages just to find a yoga class. And <laughs> now, you know what I mean? I mean, I really did. And so Other now we're in this, <laughs> in this age of just so much information being out there. And, you, and some of it's good. And then, you know, you start to go into these other, other thoughts, you know, other um ways of thinking or ways of believing and you don't always know what where it's going to lead if it if, is, is this is this good is this bad and in other words just there's so much information available out there this day that you know i think it takes a certain amount of discernment too, yeah. to recognize all right this is this is okay this is good maybe this isn't so great and yeah. but the age of Aquarius, I think, is definitely we're going in into it with so much information. Yeah, it's really quite. I mean, I've, I've noticed that on this channel a lot whenever because I've talked to you. We've talked about the um, missing gospels, just just the two of us and after class or something. And I've we've been discussing that here on this channel a lot. And it's amazing how, you know, after when the, those gospels were written around the time right after Jesus died, the Mary's gospel, Thomas's gospels, Philip gospel, and they all kind of got uh, banned and lost these real inner knowing or gnosis, very spiritual um, tantric, as we talked about on Sunday at, at uh, last Sunday at the, your studio. Um, that they were taken away during the age of Pisces. And as we turn the corner now into a new timeline, all this stuff is coming back up again. It's like the earth, mm -hmm. earth kind of vomited it back up again from the Dead Sea Scrolls, to the Nag Hammadi Library, all this stuff was being rediscovered. These ancient teachings that people want to label as new age, but they're not new. They've been around for so long and we're only now rediscovering it. And I think too, because you, you, Cindy's also like a shamanistic healer too, on top of um, teaching yoga. And I've, I've had a session with you before. You're a very, very powerful um, healer and you, you, you can read things and you, it's just incredible what you do. And you can definitely tell that that's something that you inherited as well as studied for yourself. There's like this magic um, ingredients in you. There's these elements that create, like I, like I said, the spiritual life picked you. I don't know if you picked the spiritual life, it kind of picked mm -hmm. you. Um, and, and I think as we enter into the age of Aquarius, people are going to be looking more. We're realizing now that we can't just put band-aids on top of things that we have to actively be involved in our own healing to find that inner balance. And I would love for you to speak more on that as well, because you are very powerful when it comes to assisting people in their own journey inward into their own healing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all have access in the, to, to a certain amount of energy and power because we're all, you know, I, I truly do believe that we're all truly powerful, sovereign beings and we're just like these fractals of the universe and, and we contain everything that we need. And it's just a matter of, of going in there and, and truly accessing it. And I feel that even just as a, as a healer, an energy healer, um, that that's, that's part of what I, I try to help people with too, is just being able to lift the veils 
of misinformation or, or, or miscomprehension that they might have about themselves. Um, yes, yeah, so, you know, coming out of the age of Pisces when the veil was really, really thick and, and for us to be just, just covered up in, in, um, in misbeliefs, you know, those old holding patterns and, and belief systems that are old. I mean, they're old or they're ancient. When we do this, uh, or when I do this healing kind of a work, it's not just a, a, your healing within this lifetime, but it's also your healing within past lifetimes and whatever you hold inside of you that was passed down from your ancestors. And I feel like right now we're really stepping into not only healing for ourselves, but healing for our ancestors, the ones that have come before us and that <clears throat> like, for instance, you know, like the women or the witch wounds, um, you know, the witches who were, who were tortured and buried alive and thrown in wells and, <clears throat> and all these things <laughs> and the being able to, um, to lift that, um, especially in people who are interested in, in this kind of stuff. Um, I, cause I feel, I still, till this day, feel a little protective of it. Right. Like, okay, who, who am I going to talk to about this? Because there's, there's still a sense of that inside of me. Okay. It's like, how, how are people going to, to receive this without it being, um, you know, being people coming at you with the, with the, with the stakes and everything like this. So in other words, that is very much um, still in people. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the, uh, those who are interested in, in, to, in, in this kind of work, we're having to move past all of the, the misinformation and all of that, that trauma. And as a healer, that's part of what I do as well. Yeah, um, I uh, am. I, I feel you know this is partly from my lineage too. More of a like I work within the realms of the shadow mm -hmm. for people. In other words, I can help people drop into that subconscious space with inside of them can that holds for, all this old for, trauma. For those that might not quite understand what the shadow is, um, I know a lot of people that like myself who who worked with our own shadow, we we understand what that is. But for those who are completely new to this type of spiritual healing. Can you give like a layman's uh, ex explanation of what somebody's shadow would be? It's basically whatever we put down in the subconscious and we chose to forget. <laughs> yeah. That is the realm of the shadow. Yeah. Um, I think Carl Jung is the one who coined the term the shadow. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, you know, it's a big part of psychological work and psychological studies as well. But I also believe that we store that within our bodies. So part of what I'm able to do is access it within somebody's bodies. This is the body holds and contains everything that we've ever experienced again within this lifetime or other lifetimes. And we also hold the patterns of, of our, our ancestors, the people who came before us and, and all that stuff. So we are, um, if you will, like an Akashic record of our own history and uh, the history of our, our ancestors and our relatives. So with, uh, um, with that, I can work through the body and very often access the places where, um, and, and usually what will happen if, if we, disasso we, we disassociate parts and we, we fragment ourselves and we put them into this shadowy realm and it's usually, again, things like trauma or um, things that, you know, perhaps we've just chosen to forget, aspects of ourselves that we decided were inappropriate. You know, I, I can't show this. This is inappropriate. I'm going to um, be highly judged by this. So we, we um, fragment ourselves. But it doesn't completely just go away, even though we would love sometimes perhaps for that thing just to completely disappear and go away. It never does. It stores still within you. So it's a matter of being able to go in and find where we've hidden those places within ourselves and then to reintegrate it so that you can become whole again. Mm -hmm. So the purpose is to be able to delve within where we've hidden 
and all those crevices within our minds and our bodies and our hearts and in our energetic space and pull them back up and integrate it within yourself again and becoming whole. That's the, the purpose behind it. And of course, all that, that, um, that stuff also, it causes physical pain, which is uh, um, one of the first telltale signs that there's something, something going on that's um, out of alignment within yourself. So, um, I mean, the body, it, as you know, through your practice of yoga, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing creation that we have. It's a GPS. It's our modern yes. day GPS of what, what, and you're right. Cause I know um, from my study of yoga, we have three karmas that we're always working through. And for those who are new, karma basically is just your work. It's just cause and effect. That's all it is. And we have our own personal karma stuff that we have to work through in this life and stuff from last, our past lives. We also have our ancestral karma that we're cleaning up. And we also have our collective karma, the yes. greater consciousness of the earth, which right now, again, we're all going through that, that um, moving from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius, where it just, it doesn't, the door doesn't just open and all of a sudden you're in it. It's like, we're going through that birth canal right, right now, which is why things are so hectic and crazy is because the matrix as we know it is shifting. And we're being born anew. I saw today that um, the la there's like seven planets in uh, Aquarius right now. And the last time that this happened, astrologically, we, uh, we were leaving the dark ages. Um, the play was ending. And we were entering into the Renaissance. So if that gives you guys any type of idea looking back, of course, well, we, we might have been there in that time, but as a different identity. So if that gives you any idea of like what we're, we're moving into, we're moving into a beautiful time, but man, going through that birth canal can be very painful. And a lot of times spiritual work is painful. It takes a lot. You, you can't go around the hard stuff. You got to go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know because Cindy is a, her classes are awesome. Cindy's always in my classes on Sunday and I love it, mm -hmm. but she's also an incredible yoga teacher and explain to people like when you teach, when we talk about how the body holds information and can give us that information of what we're holding back, can you explain like what is a common um, pain you see as a teacher or as a healer? you know, what part of the body and what is it typically, like if someone has a shoulder pain, that there is no injury, is there a certain spot in the body that can correlate to a different type of like energetic thought, like sorrow or anger, or is it different for different people? What have you experienced as a healer and as a teacher? Well, one, it does depend too on what side of the shoulder is, because, you know, the, the left side of the body is considered the more feminine side and the right side is the more masculine side. So the, the side of the shoulder that you're experiencing the pain, um, that can make a difference. And, uh, you know, a lot of times shoulder stuff is also directly related to what's going on here in, in the heart area. And that is a big point. There's two main places that I often find people have stuff going on. It's usually in the heart because you know, that's usually it's the most powerful part of us, but it's also the most vulnerable and it's the one that we protect. And then the throat, the throat is huge. Most people have things going on here about being able to communicate or, you know, express themselves or be authentic and express their truth and all that stuff. So if the heart is, um, Kind of in protective mode and if our throat is in protective mode we go into this way of holding ourselves in our bodies and then people start to get things like frozen shoulders or um or since their shoulders aren't aligned well if they start to reach around and do things let's say with shoulders hunched over like this then you can start to to create um things like rotator cuff tears and things like that um, but so shoulders are often related to, to the throat and the heart. And, uh, um, another place is very much like the womb and the root area, the sacral area and the root area of the body are also to, cause we know the hips, obviously they, they can hold a lot. It's a big, huge joint and it holds all of, it holds a lot of shame and, and even some guilt, guilt also comes up here into your core, but shame, especially, and uh, a feeling of not being safe 
that very much carries through in the, the hip area, in the legs, in the knees. So if you're, you in general are not feeling very safe or very secure or um, always feeling kind of like this exist, existential dread, like you don't belong here, which is a common thing among, you know, folks who experience this thing. You just don't feel like you belong here. You don't belong on this planet. <laughs> like those kind of things. Yeah. In, 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 but that like carries through into the legs is and you feel like you're, you're always having to, to escape. So, um, and then of course, in, in the womb area is, uh, in the, in the, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, for both men and women, um, being able to express emotions. We don't know how to express emotions very well here <laughs> in the West. I think we're just now starting to figure out, but I mean, we just don't know how. We don't know how to, to, to have good conversations about, about our emotions because yeah. they're always, you know, as a child, if you, you cry too much, or you're too angry or you're emotional, then, then you need to shut that, like shut that down. I can't handle it. Right. You know, the people around you can't handle it. Yeah. And so, um, so that area, the womb area, the, the sacral area are also very common places to hold stuff. Yeah. And it's interesting. I've heard the other day, another teacher I was listening to, you know, I think both of us in our free time probably uh, are kind of nerds and we'll go and research other, you know, hear other people talk about this stuff because it's so fascinating. And when you do teach it, you always want to stay up on information. But I heard someone say people will sometimes get like a, a tight jaw because it's like they're taking stuff on the chin. They're not communicating and they don't feel like yes. they, they just got to like take it. And so you see like the locked jaw is coming, not necessarily from clenching down the mouth, not to speak, but like you're actually taking a beating because you don't feel like you can stand up for yourself. And I think that even for men and women, but I know women, especially throughout the ages, as we've talked about, have been shut down a lot. Um, and, mm -hmm. and we're having to now work through that and, and uh, come into a new, a new world. And, you know, with the missing gospels, we've been looking at the gospel of the Holy 12 and um, Jesus in that gospel doesn't say God, the father, he says, my father, mother, he always includes that feminine energy in that source that we call God is not just masculine, but is also feminine as well. in that joint balance of father, mother, um, in that, in that, and I think for men too, the sensitiveness, not being able to express emotion because men also carry feminine in energy as well. Um, mm -hmm. and, and not being able to express that. Right. And so, yeah, you're right. It becomes out in both men and women. And again, that's one of the hardest things about going down a spiritual path is having to actually go down the path and having to open up Pandora's exactly. box and look through all of this stuff. If, if somebody were to come to you and say like, I really want to start a spiritual practice, um, what would your advice be to them? Would you tell them to dive in head first or would you tell them to like start doing yoga classes first and then slowly integrate into it? What would your advice be to someone, a beginner? I would say probably, you know, yoga is always a good place to start, but then to also just really pay attention to, because there's so many different paths that are out there and certain ones are going to hit home to certain people better than it is is other like yoga works for some people, but yoga doesn't work for everybody. So it's also a matter of being able to really tune in and pay attention to see what kind of things that you're, that you're attracted to. Um, but I would say, you know, definitely start just by paying attention, you know, first and foremost, just paying attention to, to yourself and paying attention to um, uh, just really becoming embodied again. I would say that that would be step number one is to really, and, and yoga is a way to do that, but to come back down into your body and to not be afraid to look at what's here. It's like you're, you're talking about, we have to go through it. So anything that you can do to bring you back down into this space, that in, instead of just being in your head and worrying or anxiety or whatever that goes on here, Anything that's going to bring you back into yourself and into your body, it's a, it's a great way to start. You know, you, you hear often sometimes people who start a practice like yoga, because it's a, a, the asana practice anyways, it's a physical practice. 
and they come in because they want to, you know, tone their glutes or they want awesome abs or they want like these great biceps and they want to look cute in their jeans and in their bathing suits. And I say, you know, that's a great place to start because what that'll do is it'll bring you back in body. Yeah. And then once you get into your body that way, then, then things will begin to, to reveal itself in the beyond, the, <laughs> beyond the, the glutes and, and the fitting into your skinny jeans and all that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally, totally. Vanity <laughs> sells it sometimes. <laughs> well, that's why yeah. back in the old days in India, they would see, you see these old uh, reels and pictures of like Krishmacharya, Iyengar, Patabi Joyce out there in the public doing these crazy asanas, these beautiful, and as for those who don't know, asana means posture, the yoga posture that you see. Um, on the and on, on Instagram today, as we they didn't have Instagram then, but it was because they were trying to attract people into their yoga school by luring mm -hmm. to their vanity, being like, yeah. I want to do that. I want to put my leg behind my head like that, and so that would lure them into this yoga school to start this this journey that they would actually use the vanity of ego to get them. yeah trick you have to like trick the ego sometimes yeah. you got to find a way to to go through it some because sometimes the ego is so put in the forefront that you got to kind of trick it to, to pull the rest of it, pull it along like a, a leash. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. And now we have Instagram. So you see it everywhere, um, which sometimes can be a bad thing. And I always tell students like, listen, anybody can look good for an Instagram picture. When you see somebody really practice, do their full practice, that's where you see all the uh, mistakes and you see all the, um, the heaviness a person can carry within themselves. And that as a teacher, I know, and you probably know this too, you do see people come in, they might appear to have a beautiful practice, but you can see the heaviness inside of them. You can see mm -hmm. that actually working through stuff that they're not even maybe even aware of at that time. And it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And Cindy, you're also into ballet and you got me into doing ballet skills as well to help my practice. How has ballet inspired you or helped you along? How has that type of movement helped you in your spiritual journey or help teach other people along their spiritual journey? Well, I love the fluidity of dance, the fluidity of movement within the body. And it goes very much along with uh, um, like this goddess path that we're, we're talking about too. Like the goddess path is, you know, often considered the, it depends on who you talk to, but it can be considered like the left hand path or the, the poison path because, uh, but I'll, um, in a good way, a good kind of poison. Um, or because it's so quick, it acts so quick because it, it is a practice of being in body. Mm -hmm. Whereas let's say you, you do something that's, you know, like more traditional or like a more traditional yoga practice, like or a very traditional, uh, Buddhist practice that depends, depends on what lineage of Buddhism you follow. But sometimes that's about transcending the body. Like the body can be something that gets in the way. Like the, the body is, uh, um, it's, it can be distracting. Your desires are distracting. And th there's a good point to that. There's, 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 it's always a matter of balance. Um, so that's kind of more, but that's also more like the patriarchy path. And it's a, it's a path of ascension. Well, the goddess path is more of a path of descension. It's working through the body to be able to find your, your peace or your awakening or your enlightenment. So in other words, the body is not something that you need to transcend. The body is something that you can work through to be able to, to find, um, find that wholeness in that we're, that we're talking about. And yeah, so that's also, it can be considered like a dangerous path because once you start to, to, to go there, you can be easily distracted, all right? That's why it's also considered kind of the poison path. And if you think about it, like for instance, um, giving birth, like giving, uh, like actually giving physical birth, like a woman who gives physical birth, it can be a moment of complete transcendence, a very primal, very like, um, intuitive moment that can awaken so many things inside of you, but it's also bloody and there's a good chance of death. <laughs> that's, that's like the poison path. You know what I mean? So Fire quick. beware. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's quick in the way it works. 
So the doses, you have to make sure that you take it within the, the right doses. That's important. Right. That's a really but good analogy. Anyways, you know, back to like ballet and stuff, it just feels very like, like a way of just coming back and understanding and getting to feel and getting to, to know the body and, and what's being held in there and the fluidity and the music and it's, it's sensual. There's a sensuality to it. That yeah, absolutely. So when somebody comes to your yoga classes, say they do you, uh, Cindy, we're, we're also just for you guys to know, I'm going to put all the links to Cindy's social media. I'm going to put the website up to her yoga school in Marietta. Marietta is in the greater Atlanta area. It's a suburb of Atlanta. And Cindy also offers with her classes, with all of her teachers, um, besides my class, I think my class is the only one that doesn't have a zoom option, but, um, cause I like to get in there and adjust people, but, um, but, um, there's a zoom uh, option for people. Cause I know I have people from all over the world watching right now. And we got, we have, we have, community members all over Europe and, and Asia and Australia. And so if, if um, you guys want to practice with Cindy, you can go to the website and you can actually log on to her Zoom classes and she'll see mm -hmm. you on the screen and she'll see you there. Now, of course, we are in the Eastern time zone. So make sure that you, you check that before you sign into her class because it will be a different time than your time if you're not on our time zone. But if someone were to sign up for one of your classes, what would they get? What would they expect for your, from your classes? What, what should they expect if it's a, an intermediate class or beginner class or all levels class like how how do you typically set up your classes for people there usually is a theme that we start I usually have a theme for the week um what has been my theme this week I can't even think about it right now but <laughs> the, there is usually a theme that we're working toward and then uh like a, a heart theme and the practice usually revolves around that somehow, some way. So if, let, let, let's say we are focusing on, on the heart, opening the heart, then we might be more emphasized on back bends or you know, opening up the chest. And um, also I love alignment um, and I love teaching alignment. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's the way I was trained through yoga. And it was very therapeutic for my own body to understand that. So there'll be alignment based. I'm, I'm also um, more like my classes aren't in the restorative classes or the gentle classes, which is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, we do have at the studio, other teachers who teach the, the more restorative and gentle classes, nothing wrong with that at all whatsoever, but you won't get that in my class. <laughs> you know, in my class. You're going to sweat in kids in these class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to focus on strength in partic particularly, you know, I think it's really important that we become stable and feel strong and empowered and sovereign in our bodies first um, and trying to establish that uh, within just, just within because when you physically feel that way, it affects you on, on, on every level, mentally, emotionally. Absolutely. And I, and I am going to, I'll tell you guys, so if you, I'm going to put Cindy's social media down below as well. And you do put on your social media every week, you put what theme you're working uh, through yes. with your students. And so you can, if you follow Cindy on her social media accounts, you'll be able to see, it's like she constantly is keeping the homework going for you so that you, the work you do in the class with her doesn't just stay in the class, but you can actually use that and take that out into your life and continue to work on that that area that she has given you as the teacher. Now for your um, healing sessions that are separate mm -hmm. from, um, from the yoga, people can also contact you from elsewhere as well, right? Yes, I mean, that is my true specialty. Mm -hmm. when, when, because it is, it is such a mishmash of everything that, that I, as, as a yoga teacher, um, as a, a Reiki master, um, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm, I was also a certified hypnotherapist for a little while. I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not certified anymore, but I was trained in that. And in, but um, my, the, my teacher who did that, he was very woo woo. And as part uh -huh. of that program, he also taught us how to like release entities from uh -huh. people and force, you know, the things that can get, get attached to people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a combination of, of that. And also, of course, the shamanism, the, the, the shamanistic aspect is really comes through. So I'm usually with, you'd be surprised if I bring out a rattle or a feather and crystals and stones. And so it's, a, it's really 
even hard to just like on the page it's like a soul alchemy kind of reiki session but it's not really it's just a combination of everything that i've learned and put together so it's just a highly intuitive process that just goes in you know we go in and, and just delve in and um i do uh, do them online. I mean, mostly, yeah, I have the yoga studio space. So most of the time I do them in person. I'm a feeler and a knower. So even if I'm watching you on screen, it's a, it's a matter of, you know, like me still trying to like feel in <laughs> to your, to your, to your space to see yeah. like where, where the things are, what, what's yeah. going on in there. And then being able to excavate it and, and dig it out. But I mean, I do feel that that, that that is my truest specialty and probably more of my higher calling. And I will say, because you've, you've done a session with me before and it's, it's, it's magical and intense at the same time. And she does, Cindy mm -hmm. does pull out everything. And it's one of the yeah. most incredible experiences you'll ever have. You might be a little exhausted afterwards, um, but that's yeah. normal. That's good because you've, even though she's the one performing the ritual on you, you're the one doing the work, whether you realize it or not. Oh, yeah. absolutely. You have to do the work. Yeah. That's the only way it would work. Yeah. If it was me pulling the stuff out of you, then it wouldn't last. <laughs> it would just, but that's not the way things are supposed to be done. I don't feel anyways, you exactly. know, you, for something to, to, for, to really take in the last, you've got to do it yourself. Oh, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. And something fun will end on because I know a lot of my, uh, my, my people who watch this channel, we were all a little weird. And I think Cindy would proudly fit in that, in that group with us. Um, we talk a lot about aliens, about extraterrestrials and how a lot of people have, um, DNA that's mixed in with some, um, ET DNA. And you've told me that you, you can kind of see that on people. Um, do you want to get into yeah. that a little bit? Well, I was doing in July, it was when the uh, Lionsgate portal opened. I felt this strong calling to do light body activations on people. And I've never done such a thing before. It was just like, okay, just go out and start doing them. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> let's see where this takes us. And especially then uh, you could see where certain, like certain people are, are um, in other words, the, the, your tribe, um, it could, there were so many that were from the alien realm. Some were from the fey realm. Um, some were just like very like earthy. Um, some were from like the Egyptian and the Atlantean realm, which Atlantean oftentimes go back to aliens anyways. But it's uh, amazing how many different things are out there. Yeah. And there and some of them are very beautiful. I mean, the ones um, where they're your 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 guides. I mean, they're they're beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energies that are out there. And then how a lot of the things that that are here on Earth are a reflection of things that are out in the in in the cosmic world. Like in other words, there are certain, for instance, like certain insect beings that are just reflection of these alien insect beings that are out there. As above, you know, so below. Mm -hmm, exactly. So there's a lot of things like that that you begin to, to see and realize how big the world, not the world, but how big the, the universe, the multiverse actually is. And I'm we're just like teeny it. little tiny little things. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, we've actually talked about multiverses on this channel as well, too. Like all these different things that we, and this is all coming with the age of Aquarius, where, where we're going to have to like unlearn some things and relearn them the way that the, the truth actually is. And the truth is often stranger than fiction. So that's why it's so fun. Um, so again, uh, what days do you teach, Cindy, um, at Sacred Garden? What are your days? For yoga, I teach on Monday nights at 530 um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. These are Eastern Standard and Fridays at 5.30 and then on Saturday at 10 a.m. And That's you run courses Saturday. as well for, for yoga, but you also yes, run courses for this. I also have, yoga. with a friend of mine, we run a mystery school um, where we go into the realms of uh, like the first part of the mystery school, we call it initiation. And that's where we go into the realm of, of the earth mm -hmm. and studying the elements of the earth, like, you know, fire, water, um, earth and air. 
Um, and we spend a good amount of time, like that, that first part is just about getting acquainted with the earth. Then the second part of the course is called calibrate, calibration. And then we go out into the cosmic forces with the seven main planetary influences that are out there. And again, it's just that as above, so below, they're just a reflection of, of you. Like the, the energy of the sun is a representation of your own light and radiance that's in you. And you can use the sun in order like if you forgot because yeah. we forget you know, that's right. why all this right. stuff is here is to help us to remember so if you forget the sun if you like reconnect with the sun in this kind of a way and start to embody and bring in the energy of the sun it, it will awaken that part of you again and so but there's all these other you know the other planets that are out there as well um and again it's just another tool another resource for you to use to help to to um to awaken and to yeah. help for you to remember who you really are, that you're not going through this process alone. You have so much out here and with it and within to, yeah. to take you, to guide you through. You don't have to go through any of it alone. And we are just and spiritual beings having a human experience instead of human beings. Exactly. Yeah. We are our essence. Yeah. I actually read this morning, somebody posted, if we could just remember that our main job is spiritual and not human it would change the way we live we all live our lives you know that Absolutely. spirituality isn't just church on sundays or the yoga class once a week it's a 24 hour seven day a week being that we're in and it, we're just here as humans to to learn more lessons and and um and and i think i do i do personally believe that as we enter the age of aquarius we are shifting into more understanding that about ourselves and and that we're not what our ancestors maybe thought we were um we're mm -hmm. more, more than that we're transcending to to what to what we really ca are capable of as spiritual beings and not just a human body with a, a deadline that we got to get to, yeah. and that, you know? So and that um, is like the realm of magic, like true magic is being able to create these relationships with these unseen forces or, or forces that we normally don't pay attention to and recognize how again, how vast we actually are. Mm -hmm. And when we do get caught up in our silly little problems. In and our own little matrix that we've created. And then you kind of look bigger and beyond. You're like, wow, that, that is kind of a silly little problem, isn't it? <laughs> is that, <laughs> you know? you get on an airplane and you look down at the earth from below. Yeah. Earth, well, you're like, wow, that's so small. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just, it's, exactly. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part of it is, is that, yeah, recognizing the things that really don't matter as much or they don't need to, but we make such a big deal, a big fuss out of things that aren't, that aren't right. worth our attention. Right. And, but that's what we're here to do too, is to, is to help to break those old chains, old habit or, yeah. or, or those old ways of thinking or perceiving that old framework of being that old framework, that Piscean old framework, breaking it down to so this new, new yeah. way. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's exciting. And this, and this new thing that's emerging, we don't even know what that looks like yet, you know? And I think that's why people are terrified too, because oh, no. <laughs> so, and we've talked about that before. I see it, we see it in yoga all the time. It's like human beings, we would rather sometimes be stuck in trauma that we recognize oh. instead of move into something better that we don't recognize. Heck it's yeah, like, that's probably 80% of the population. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> At least, <laughs> yeah. We would just rather stay in that awful place, but we know the awful oh, yeah. place. We know it. <laughs> then move into something that we don't know, but could be beautiful. It's it's that's that's the samskara. That's what we have to keep repeating yes. stuff over and over and over again. And for people who don't understand that, it's like how many times in your life have you had to go through the same same mistake before you actually realize you're in control and you can stop that habit. You know, you can you can you can stop that. So um, so that's kind of the the a more uh, layman term of what SM Scara actually is. But um, mm -hmm. so, uh, so Cindy, you are Sacred Garden Yoga is her yoga studio. Again, that's in Marietta. And with Cindy's permission, I have, we taped her practicing uh, in my class last Sunday. It's on time lapse. I was going to put that at the end of this video. So people, if that's okay with you. Um, oh, of course. 
So yeah. people can kind of see the studio. It's this beautiful studio. She has great teachers. All the teachers there are all almost specialized in, in a different um, theory of yoga. I'm Ashtanga. You have Iyengar. You have Anusara. There's different forms of, of yoga at her school, at her yoga school, which is why I call it a yoga school because there's different teachers. And again, you guys can look on the website and you can join any of her teacher's classes too. If you see a restorative class you want to take, um, if you have questions for Cindy, I guess info at sacredgardenyoga.com is the email address mm -hmm. you can put up. Yeah, um, absolutely. I have my own personal website too. It's Cindyola, Cindyola.com, I think. <laughs> I'll put that <laughs> in the that box also, too. And then it's on the Sacred Garden Yoga website too, but it also, ex um, goes in to explain some of the other things like the energy work and the energy healings and the, um, the mystery school and, and all that, all that other fun stuff. Realm as yeah. well, that fun <laughs> realm. <laughs> awesome. And, and yes, and if you, and if you have questions about, if, if you've never done yoga before and you want to talk to Cindy, I'm sure they can email you as well and ask you what classes would be better for for people and um, her her uh, yoga school is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. If you're in the Atlanta area, I would highly suggest looking at the schedule and stopping by and taking a class. Give give Cindy a follow on social media. Again, even if even if you just follow her, you'll learn so much from her post, and it'll give you a good starting place to start doing your self investigation over the topics that she brings up and talks about. And is there anything you want to add that we didn't cover? No, I think that's, that's good. Um, I would say, well, if you're in the Atlanta area, you have to check out Bryce's classes too. Don't forget about yourself. Wow. Just, you know, <laughs> Yes, beware. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, uh, my class, so I, so for those who don't know, uh, the Ashtanga method that I teach, the asana, the sequence of asana, asana or postures that I teach, I don't create. It's a set series that all Ashtanga people teach all around the world. And so with that being said, it's very different from what you might find in another class where the teacher can't kind of has the, um, the freedom to be creative and work through different things. Um, and Ashtanga does have the uh, reputation of being kind of brutal. So, <laughs> <laughs> but Cindy's a tough sport. She comes every Sunday religiously and she is a yes. kind of beautiful, strong practice. Everybody, all my students at Sacred Garden have very strong, beautiful, beautiful practices and all the teachers there. It's a very warm and welcoming yoga school and everybody there is just really trying to work on themselves. And so all, all levels are welcome and wanted at that yoga school. So, so please make sure you check that out. And I guess, yeah. So thank you so much, Cindy. This is awesome. We'll have to do this again, perhaps with your partner um, that you did the mystery school with. Maybe we can set up another interview and do with her as well. And yeah. Yeah, so much to talk about all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, yeah. I'm so glad that you're doing a channel like this because, I mean, there's just so much out there, so much to talk about. We're just going straight into this new, this new uh -huh. age. Uh, Ram Dost, who is a, uh, I know Cindy knows Ram Dost, for, for those who don't know of him, he was a great spiritual teacher. He passed away right before the fun began. He passed away <laughs> in 2000. He was like, all right, I did my time. Yeah, See like, <laughs> wait, I'm out. I'm out. Um, exactly. 2019, but he used to say, we're, we're all just walking each other home. We're all mm -hmm. just walking each other home. And that's one thing I, I, that I'm glad we're kind of leaving this world of dogmatic religion that divides mm -hmm. people. And, and as we've said on this channel, even the, and as Cindy and I have spoken about, even I grew up Protestant, she grew up Catholic, even, even within the Christian faith, when we look back at the missing gospels, we see that Christianity itself was not divisive like it is now. Mm -hmm. It was very about, mm -hmm. much about gnosis or inner knowledge and self-work and that light inside of us that they call themselves the sons of light, the Essenes, um, that obviously moved off to different lineages and um and and now we're coming home to that where where we're unifying and we're going into this brave new world all all walking each other home together so yes. so, so yes if if you guys are interested please contact cindy i'm you also are welcome to contact me if you have questions and i thank you so much cindy um tell your husband and your son i said hello uh, her, her hello. son is an awesome piano player i see the piano right oh, there <laughs> 
his music room. <laughs> very, very talented. You can tell Cindy is his mother because he has the, the flair for the talent and um, he, she's constantly posting <laughs> videos. So, and yeah, we'll, we'll have you back. We'll have you back on the show and we'll oh, do- I would love to, anytime, anytime. And I will see you Sunday, tomorrow. <laughs> at, oh in my, my gosh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for Ashtanga. So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. And Cindy, I will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.